First question is from Lamar Second. What are the advantages or disadvantages of alternating sides during an exercise versus doing both sides at the same time? For example, when doing a dumbbell press, is it better to do one arm at a time or both arms at once? Oh, they're both good. It's actually yeah. almost a different exercise. So let's use the dumbbell press as an example since that's the question, right? So mm -hmm. let's say I'm doing a dumbbell shoulder press. If I do one at, one at a time, that means one arm that's resting, it's not really resting, right? It's holding a position while the other one's pressing, is doing an isometric contraction in that particular position. There's two mm -hmm. ways you could do it. One is with the arm at the bottom while the other one presses, and one is while the arm is at the top while the other one presses. The other difference is because I'm moving a weight on one side, it's requiring more core stability in particular to stabilize because as the lever changes and lengthens, mm -hmm. it's making one side slightly heavier than the other. You really feel this like on a chest press. Like you do one arm at a time on a chest press and you have to stabilize your body from rolling off the That's bench. my favorite part about it is like sort of the anti-rotation component because like when you're doing anything super functional or athletic, um, that's a major uh, factor in how well you're going to be able to, you know, perform and respond uh, based on what types of stress or types of movement that you're, you know, trying to explosively produce. So, uh, I mean, there's lots of carryover in, in terms of like alternating, um, you know, which sides, uh, you know, you're focusing on. I would argue that the the most beneficial is the isometric portion of it and then the time under tension. If you do 10 dumbbell presses with both arms together, uh, time it, uh, how long it takes you to do that. Mm -hmm. If you do the same thing, alternating, so 10 and 10 on your side, which mm -hmm. basically means you get to 20 reps, figure out the time. Mm -hmm. You're going to you're gonna dramatically increase the time under tension for the same muscle, and you're also going to incorporate a isometric portion that you don't really get in a, in a typical – you know, both arms pressing. So I think it's a great way to, and when else do the, does the average person include isometrics? Very, very rare. And we've talked about at nauseum, the benefits of isometric training mm -hmm. and very few people do it. This is a great way to incorporate it in your training. Um, and to like Sal said, you could, and you could do the isometric contraction at the top of the, the rep or at the bottom of the rep. And that goes for shoulder pressing and curling. And I mean, almost every exercise you can incorporate this. So there's tremendous value in it, uh, especially if you never do it. So if you do most of your exercises, both arms together all the time, um, then incorporating, uh, you know, alternate, which you're going to have to lighten the load yep. mm -hmm. because of the increased time under tension. And the stability. It's yeah. harder to go as heavy when you're alternating. Oh, now, yeah. does that make it a better exercise? No. No. It makes it a different exercise. In fact, if I were to... The difference between barbell exercises and dumbbell exercises is very similar to the difference between dumbbell and alternating dumbbell exercises. So if you were to rank them in terms of amount of weight you can lift and total force generated, and then you add in stability and control and tension and time under tension, you can see that it's like barbell training, dumbbell training, alternate dumbbell training. So you know, obviously with barbells, I can use more weight, generate more power, higher load, uh, but I'm not going to have as much time under tension typically. I'm not going to have as much of a stability component. You go to dumbbells, not as much weight, but there's more stability involved. Then I go to alternating, even lower weight, even more stability involved. All of them have value. So it's it's. I think it's important to incorporate them all differently. I mean, when I alternate with dumbbells, I also can isolate and squeeze the muscle that I'm really working on. Like I'll give you an example. One of my favorite alternating exercises with dumbbells is a dumbbell row. So I'll bend over with two dumbbells. I'll bring one up, squeeze that lat and that side, hold that, and then row the other one up and then bring the other one down and squeeze that the other side. So I'm constantly focusing on the squeeze with that movement. So the follow-up question or what should be the follow-up question to this is how do I incorporate this into my, my training program? And this is uh, uh, what I do it personally is very similar to how Sal, you talked not that long ago on the podcast of, you know, when you're in a cut, how you like to do lightweight and high reps. So mm -hmm. I like to do this, like maybe if I overreached and I've been, maybe I'm in a strength phase and I trained really heavy and I'm back on that muscle group and I'm yeah. still kind of sore. So mm -hmm. I don't want to go, I don't want to load really heavy again. So I'll go a much lighter weight and focus on con control and the isometric portion of the exercise and doing things like this because I know that I'm going to have to significantly reduce the weight to do this. So I may not do as much, much muscle damage as I would if I was heavy loading uh, or doing both dumbbells together. 
So that's kind of how I would do it. And really, it's uh, if it's something you never do, there's tremendous value in it. If you already incorporate it into your routine or that's how you always train, then training barbell movements are going to be uh, very beneficial to that person. So it's whatever you're doing the least.